iPod, a thousand songs in your pocket. If today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? Okay, we're here uh, with Sean King from Your Mic Live. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Yourself? Yeah, I'm doing very well. Well, more than one year ago you interviewed me. Now it's my time. <laughs> it's time to turn the tables. Yeah. Fair enough. What's your first time here in the Mac Expo London? It's my first time in L London Mac Expo, my first time in London sober, yeah. Okay, cool. How was it? It's great so far. We, we haven't had a chance to do much uh, touristy type stuff, but the actual show floor is very cool. I'm surprised. Uh, I had no preconceptions of how big it would be, but I'm very surprised and happy about how big it is. Uh, the HP booth is, is huge. They brought all their big large format printers. Yeah. Uh, the Adobe booth is, is probably about 75% the size it would be in America. Uh, Nikon's got a good sized booth. Uh, Apple's got a fair decent sized booth. Yeah. So I'm very impressed with uh, the yeah. size of the Expo. What about London? London itself, oh, well, London is, is just, it's a city that I've known about, like Paris and New York. It, they're, they're, I was tell, telling Lisa, my wife, last night, they're not, it's not a British city, it's a world city, like Paris. It's, it's the flavor of London isn't British, it's, it's yeah. around the world. Uh, we went to a, a restaurant last, or a pub last night called the Churchill Arms. And apparently it was where Winston Churchill did his wartime broadcast from, okay. from the actual pub. So we go there and we have, we, we have a pint of Guinness, like you're supposed to it in Britain apparently, and in the back of the pub was this Thai restaurant, which is really kind of weird. You know? yeah. yeah, pub and Thai restaurant, pub and Thai restaurant. And we had this great Thai food. So yeah, London is fantastic. We've seen the Tower of London uh, on Thursday night, and we plan on going to the London Eye, the British Museum, up to Greenwich. So yeah, we're going to enjoy ourselves. So still staying here. Still staying here. Yeah, we're, we're here till, till Tuesday. A lot of folks would run off the day after a show, but no, we want to hang around and uh, visit London. Yeah. yeah. So the UK is neither the US, neither Europe. It's kind of in between, no? Yeah, yeah it's interesting uh, vibe with the British that they're, they they don't want to be part of America. Uh, they don't want to be part of Europe. They don't want to be part of Europe either, which is really neat. It's interesting to see how few, if you go to the uh, the Paris Expo, to see how few Brits come over to the Paris Expo. Yeah. Now, maybe part of it's because they have this show. They don't have to go to Paris, spend the money to go to Paris. Yeah. They know they can come to London. I don't think that's it. I think they just don't like the French. There, <laughs> yeah, there's like water the in between, that's why. That's right, exactly. They don't like traveling over water yeah yeah so um how has the show here i've been with you uh, a lot of contacts a lot of interview done yeah i'm surprised at how many folks i could interview. now there's some companies that are that are only uk based so while they might have interesting stuff i can't interview yeah. them uh but there's been lots of folks i've been surprised at the google booth the google booth has been huge and first time it might yeah i think it might be the first time they've had a booth this size at any mac expo so it's great to see google supporting the platform uh there are companies here like our friends at, at the real mac uh, they do uh the rapid weaver rapid weaver it's a great piece of software. Uh, first time I got to meet the guys at uh, Software Mac Kiev. They make this really funky, cool uh, 3D Atlas globe thing, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Root Buddy, another company that uh, is, is new here on the show. Yeah. They do, uh, for those folks who remember our show from last January, we interviewed the folks at Garmin. Yeah. And they said they would have their software out this summer. Well, they haven't. They've dropped the ball. But the folks at Root Buddy have picked it up, yeah. and they've made software that interfaces with your your Garmin devices, your yeah. GPS devices that you can use in your Macintosh. Yeah, yeah. So it's great to see companies here that are picking up the slack from other companies. It's cool. Before that, we forget, let's talk a little bit about iStock Photo. We are here at the booth of iStock Photo, and it's because of them that you are here. Yes, thank you very much to <laughs> iStockPhoto.com. Those guys have been great sponsoring the show and supporting the show. But we always have sponsors and supporters of the show of companies that we like. You know, yeah. it wasn't even, if some company we didn't like wanted to throw money at us. Well, we take it. I'm sorry, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But we wouldn't be happy about it. iStock is, is a great company because it works two different ways. It works in the way that you usually expect stock photography. You go to the website, you do a search for Halloween, you buy something. But iStock also lets you, the, the, the viewer, upload your stuff to their website. And it's not just photos. It's iStock photo, but it's flash an animation. It's it's illustrator files. It's video now. Uh, maybe they'll get into music at some point in time. But you can contribute your stuff. So, yeah. you know, if you're if you're running around London and you're taking this great picture of the Tower of London, you can upload it to iStock photo and maybe somebody will buy it. Yeah. And if someone buys it, you get money for it. So, for the, your family videos, the yeah. videos you shot of your kids or things like that, yeah. you might be able to use that and make a little bit of money on it. So, yeah. it's, it's a great two-way street. You can also buy really cool stuff at Dirt cheap prices, you know, uh, web images, which a lot of folks will want to use in a website, are only a buck. Yeah. You know, all the way up to to high end videos. I think they're 40, uh, 
Yeah, what about forty forty dollars for for giant files? You can see some of those on the wall behind us. But they're files that you can do whatever you want with now. You can pretend that you shot the picture. Yeah, if you yeah. want to be a, a lion sob and and, and and tell folks, oh, I shot this beautiful picture. Yeah. But yeah, check it out. iStockphoto.com. They do some great stuff. Yeah. Also, gonna put a props in for our friends at Griffin Technology. Yeah. They're here on the show floor too. They've got a big ad outside. Yeah. Uh, they've got some, they they won. Congratulations to Griffin. They won the Mac User Award for the best iPod manufacturer uh, this past year. So 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 yeah. good for them. That's uh, uh, yeah. I think they deserve that. We didn't interview them because we already did it the last time. So we're not gonna interview them every Fair time. Enough. We spoke with Katy and she said, yeah, fair enough. We have the same product as the Apple X in Paris. So, but they are cool guys anyways. Yeah, they're great uh, guys. Lisa, your wife, is working for iStock Photo and has her own podcast also now. Yeah, she is the chief evangelist for iStock Photo. So her job is to go out and not only tell people how cool iStock is, but she also does training videos. If you, yeah. if you listen to the show, she does the graphic tip of the week. Well, so now she's doing her own podcast. But it's a podcast for business users, how to make the graphics on their, their PowerPoint slides look better. Worst thing in the world is to go to a business presentation and some guy puts up a PowerPoint slide and it's 15 lines of text yeah. you know it's just painful so she tries to teach business users how to make images look better if you watch a Steve Jobs perfect example is a Steve Jobs keynote Steve Jobs will put up one image on screen maybe three lines yeah. of text less is more exactly and he'll talk for 15 minutes about that one image everyone in business should do that because what happens is People will look at the one image and then watch Steve yeah. because the image is in their head. They're not reading his slide. They're not going down and reading stuff. Yeah. They're focused on Steve. And that's the way you should do it in your business yeah. presentation. Yeah. So she teaches folks about that. Just thinking about Microsoft doing most of the time the, oh op God, the yeah. opposite. Oh. They have like slides in PowerPoint with 3,000 images. I, on them. I went to a Bill Gates keynote, Kill Me Now, at CES. It was the most painful thing ever because it was everything wrong with PowerPoint. PowerPoint's a decent program. Yeah. You can do a lot with PowerPoint. Microsoft's doing cre cool yeah. things. Exactly. You can do a lot of cool stuff in PowerPoint, yeah. but even Bill Gates had behind him on the screen 15 lines of text, bullet point text, and he would just read them off. I was like, dude, I can read. You know, I can read your bullet points. Don't yeah. don't you read them back to me? It's pretty boring anyway. Oh, he's t oh, he's horribly boring. So I guess it's a pretty cool guy, but. Um I mean, now he understood, at least. He changed his job. So Exactly, that's right. <laughs> but it took him 30 years. Took a different gig, yeah. yeah. Uh, last year, as you interviewed me, I um, told you about something. So now I will ask you the question the other way around. My show is about one hour, one hour and a half, two one hour. Your show is about like two hours, two, two hours, and thirty, two, two, and two and a half, which is kind of normal in the States. So I want you to tell the listeners that it's it's okay if it's two and a half. Well, the beauty of the, of the internet difference. is you can watch, you can listen to anything when you want to. Now, if you're listening to our live show, yeah, you're listening for two and a half hours. Uh, but most folks don't listen to our live show, and I'm hearing from a lot, especially folks here in the UK. It's too late in the, or too early in the morning for them to listen. It's to really, live. it's 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Yeah. So they'll, they'll listen to the show in chunks rather than listen to it all at once. A lot of folks think you have to listen to it all at once. Your show, our show, anything longer than about 10 minutes. They think, oh, I can't listen to that. I have to listen to it all. I don't have time. Well, you do. You take 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there. You drop it on your iPod while you're commuting on, on, on the train or on the bus or in your car or whatever. You can watch, you can listen to, to, to the podcast that way. One podcast can last you the whole week. Yeah. You know, if you do it in like 20 minute chunks, then that's a whole week worth of shows. So yeah. the, thing, the thing about it is that you have to focus your podcast on segments. Don't do one thing for an hour. Yeah. If you do bits and chunks, folks can, can digest it a whole lot easier. It's like the old thing about how do you eat an elephant? Well, yeah. one bite at a time. Yeah. You know, How do you listen to a long podcast? Yeah. One piece at a time. So. That's the reason why I make chapters. Exactly. Chapters are great. I'm too lazy to do chapters. Good on you for doing that. But I, everyone keeps asking, do chapters? No, you know what? I'm too lazy for chapters. When did you start your mic live, by the way? Started, uh, we've been doing it for about 12 years now. 12 uh, years? I've been broadcasting on the internet for 12 years, yeah. The same show? Uh, the same style of show, different names, but it's always been the same style of a show. Okay, okay. Okay. So you've been obviously there before podcasting. It should be called Sean Casting. I was here Sean first. <laughs> but you'll see this whole evolution of podcasting and now everybody's doing this thing. Yep. Well, it's... Remember back in the day of, of desktop publishing when the Mac first came on? You had... Everyone could do... Oh, look, we can do this desktop publishing. I can put 15 fonts on, the, on, on my newsletter. It was butt ugly. Yeah. It's the same with podcasting. There's a lot of bad podcasts out there. But there's a lot of good ones, too. Yeah. Try as many as you, as you can. I mean, you know, I've never said to anyone, only listen to our show or only listen to one show. You've got two ears, you've got a lot of time, listen to as much stuff as you can. Find the good stuff. Over time, the folks who aren't any good at it will fade away. 
folks who get bored by it will fade away, and some of your favorite podcasts might disappear. Twit might disappear. Everyone's favorite podcast, Leo Laporte, is talking about he might have to shut down Twit. It's because people just sort of drift off. It's not anymore a podcast anyway. True, exactly. It's a netcast. It's a netcast. Yeah, <laughs> shut up, Leo. It's still a freaking podcast. <laughs> but so yeah, it's everyone can do a podcast. That doesn't mean everyone can do yeah. a, a good podcast. So it the the democratization of podcasting is great. But like all, all democracies, it's a little dirty and messy at times. So I have no problem with it. I think I think it's a great thing that anybody who wants to do this stuff can do it. It doesn't take very much technology, it doesn't take very much knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and, but good podcasts podcast will always be a good podcast. Yeah. So. yeah. I pretty much guess you love you love your job. You love what you're doing, no? I'm you know what it's better than getting a real job. I'm just I said like I said earlier, I'm lazy, man. This is the yeah, yeah. this is the easiest thing in the world. I get to talk for a living. Yeah. I get to talk to cool people for a living, travel to cool places for a living. Uh, cool companies sponsor me and give me money. <laughs> I'm a happy camper, man. <laughs> since the last time we saw us, by the way, our turned also professional since six really? months now. Yeah. Right. So that's also my day job. Yeah. So I wanted you to to, to to for the last time to talk to the people and explain them that you have to live your dream. It's all about that. That's an excellent point excellent point it, it, it's tough at times but if you can find the way to do it whether it's it's a physical you have to move someplace where there's resources they have to buy extra equipment whatever it is that you want to do find a way to do it because there's nothing worse we've all done the nine to five jobs we're yeah. sitting there looking at our watch oh crap it's like 10 minutes oh god don't do that don't do that get out there and do what you love i'm doing it you're doing it yeah. everyone should do what they love i'm always ending my show remembering the guys what uh, steve jobs said uh, at uh, stanford which is about looking yourself in the mirror yeah. and uh, if what you do um, if you don't like what you do just switch stop doing it. Yeah, exactly just just stop doing it if, if you're not having fun what you're doing find a way to not do it and find a way soon don't be that guy that's 65 years old yeah. sitting around just freaking and miserable the last 40 years you know if, if you're young get out and do it if you're old get out and do it okay thank you very much maybe we see us each other again in san francisco we will thank you very much my name is john mcdonald i'm nikon solutions manager okay it's pronounced nikon <laughs> okay um what are you showing here to the people coming to the booth well typically with a show like this we'd want to show a range of what's new um we've got a range of cool picks cameras for consumer some prosumer cameras which are sort of halfway and professional cameras as well so yeah. pretty much the range of what we do mm -hmm. and what's current yes uh, since uh, you're working also with Aperture with a guy at Apple uh, yeah we were quite closely with uh, with Apple yeah and you are also working on the, the booth which is over there which is a photo on the Mac we've had a seminar slot each day of the of the show yes okay uh, what's the new thing you have in terms of, uh, of uh, digital photographies well, I, I suppose really the story for us very much this year is, uh, is Wi-Fi. Yeah. The, the idea of being able to sort of bypass compact flash or storage media entirely and sending images to your, uh, your Apple via Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. Well, as we know, probably all, virtually all Macs are airport enabled, which means the facility is there to well, get stuck, straight, stuck in straight away with a, a wireless enabled camera. Yeah, yeah. Be that Coolpix or the top end sitting uh, D200 Pro SLR and T2X. Yeah, yeah. How do you see people getting interested in professional cameras? The consumer people are starting to be more and more interested with uh, Aperture or, uh, for example, your software Capture NX, which is also uh, really important. Uh, well, yeah, Cap Capture NX is quite important to us, but I mean, Nikon are a, a camera manufacturer who also happens to make software. Yeah, yeah. And it's very good, very capable software, and Nikon obviously would like people to use it, but realistically, the, the most important part of the software package from Nikon is the stuff that works directly with the, the Wi-Fi adapter, for instance, which is Nikon Camera Control and Nikon Camera Control Pro. I've heard photogra photographers, by the way, telling me that what they wanted, what they waited from Aperture 1.5 is that it had some functionalities that Capture NX had. Really? That's interesting. I've not explored it that far. It's actually on my desktop waiting to download. <laughs> I need to upgrade my operating system so I can yeah. use 1.5. Because, like you said, we might thought uh, Nikon is just about hardware, but this, this uh, Capture Renix is actually... A camera is nothing, a digital camera is nothing without an established yeah. workflow, frankly. Uh, a route to which you, get, you go through to um, end up with a final result. So, um, as a professional photographer, you, must have, yeah. you have to think about the workflow process yeah, yeah. Um, because it has a significant impact on how you shoot, how you go about doing your job. Mm -hmm. It's almost finished here, like in, uh, let's say, 40 minutes it's going to be finished. How was the feedback uh, that you get from the people? Excellent, absolutely excellent. We had 
lots and lots of people coming on who are existing Nikon customers who have just recently traded up, as well as lots of people who are looking for the first time at Nikon, so it's been a good show for us, very good. I can see us more or less coming back next year without much problem at all. We missed out because we last came here independently as Nikon back in 1998, I think, so it's been quite a long gap as, since, since Nikon we're here as an independent exhibitor, if you like. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's the importance of the Mac platform from Nikon, for Nikon? It's so significant importance to our pro group, the, our pro business group, because in the pro photography market there's a much higher percentage of Mac user than in the consumer and prosumer area. Yeah. So this is an important group for us. Mac users in the pro environment are very important to us mm -hmm. on the professional DSLR front. Mm, last interview with uh, Greenpeace this time. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, yeah. I'm told that they tell me no, Greenpeace is not here anymore. Okay, so uh, anyway, it was the last interview we had. They've been thrown out here at the Mac Expo for any good or bad reason. Whatever, we will have them anyways in an audio podcast one way or another. Be sure of it, because we're pretty green and we would like to green our apples also. So whatever, it was the last um, day here in uh, the Mac Expo London, our first year here, and we hope to come back next year, which will be uh, October 25th to October 27th, 2007. We'll be here, maybe with Greenpeace or without Greenpeace, whatever, anyways with, with Apple, and uh, we hope you guys check out the English podcast just like the other ones, You hope we hope you like it, we, you, we hope you write um, us a mail, write me a mail to stuff, mc at homecast.com, and um, don't forget about uh, what we said in the interview with Sean, um, life is too uh, short to uh, be boring, so just think about switching.